Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Allelu, alleluia. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and the door shall be opened unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Oh, alleluia is right. Welcome to the reading of the Word of God as we come to the close of this fantastic year. And we are on December 27. That is today, December 27. And we will start off and continue reading in Zechariah today, chapter 10. If you would like to please open your Bibles there. And I pray that you might have a new King James. That's the version we've been reading this year. And it's awfully hard to follow along in a different translation. So if you don't have it, you can just listen because faith cometh by hearing, right? Hearing, that's the only reason I read it out is so that we all will have our faith grow as we hear the word of God, Zechariah chapter 10. And I had such an encouraging little word happen yesterday from Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse eight. Here's an encouraging word for you that you can just take in today and then hang on to it right into the new year. Deuteronomy 31, verse 8, The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So take those words in as truth for your heart and your life. Let's get right into <clears throat> Zechariah chapter 10, right after a quick little sip here. Ah. Ask the Lord for rain. Wow, it rained here all day yesterday. <laughs> Constantly. Ask the Lord for rain in the time of the latter rain. The Lord will make flashing clouds. He will give them showers of rain, grass in the field for everyone. For the idols speak delusion. The diviners envision lies and tell false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore, the people wend their way like sheep. They are in trouble because there is no shepherd. My anger is kindled against the shepherds, and I will punish the goat herds. For the Lord of hosts will visit his flock, the house of Judah, and will make them as his royal horse in the battle. From him comes the cornerstone, from him the tent peg, from him the battle bow, from him every ruler together. They shall be like mighty men who tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. They shall fight because the Lord is with them and the riders on horses shall be put to shame. 
And if you remember, the last horrible battle coming. The riders come down from the North East countries on horseback in order to get over the mountains to try to destroy Israel. Guess who's going to lose that one? I will strengthen the house of Judah and I will save the house of Joseph. I will bring them back. And oh, we all know that's what's happening. They, they are coming home to their heritage, to their land. It isn't just that they're on the land. They own the land. It is their heritage from the Lord. Because I have mercy on them, the Lord says, they shall be as though I had not cast them aside. For I am the Lord their God, and I will hear them. Those of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice as if with wine. Yes, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. I will whistle for them and gather them. How about that? Wow. I mean, if we were to hear the Lord whistle, that would resound all over the world, wouldn't it? I will whistle for them and gather them, for I will redeem them, and they shall increase as they once increased. Babies born, I will sow them among the peoples, and they shall remember me in far countries. They shall live together with their children, and they shall return. He's calling them home now, isn't he? I will also bring them back from the land of Egypt and gather them from Assyria. I will bring them into the land of Gilead and Lebanon until no more room is found for them. <clears throat> he shall pass through the sea with affliction and strike the waves of the sea. All the depths of the river shall dry up. And then the pride of Assyria shall be brought down, and the scepter of Egypt shall depart. So I will strengthen them in the Lord, and they shall walk up and down in his name, says the Lord. And we move along to chapter 11. Wow, isn't it wonderful? that we've come to a nice chapter of encouragement here for God's people. <clears throat> chapter 11 of Zechariah. Open your doors, O Lebanon, that fire may devour your cedars. Wail, O Cyprus, for the cedar has fallen because the mighty trees are ruined. Wail. O oaks of Bashan, for the thick forest has come down. There is the sound of wailing shepherds, for their glory is in ruins. There is the sound of roaring lions, for the pride of the Jordan is in ruins. And thus says the Lord my God, feed the flock for slaughter whose owners slaughter them and feel no guilt. Those who sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their shepherds do not pity them. For I will no longer pity the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. But indeed, I will give everyone into his neighbor's hand and into the hand of his king. They shall attack the land, and I will not deliver them from their hand. So I fed the flock for slaughter. In particular, the poor of the flock, I took for myself two staffs, the one I called beauty, and the other I called bonds. And I also have a translation of that word unity. 
and I fed the flock. I dismissed the three shepherds in one month. My soul loathed them, and their soul also abhorred me. And then I said, I will not feed you. Let what is dying die, and what is perishing perish. Let those that are left eat each other's flesh. Ooh. And I took my staff, beauty, and cut it in two, that I might break the covenant which I had made with all the peoples. So it was broken on that day. Thus the poor of the flock who were watching me knew that it was the word of the Lord. And then I said to them, If it is agreeable to you, give me my wages, and if not, refrain. So they weighed out for my wages thirty pieces of silver. Does that ring knowledge to you? And the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter. That princely price they set on me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver and I threw them into the house of the Lord for the potter. How about that word spoken way back by Jeremiah? And then I cut into my other staff bonds or unity that I might break the brotherhood between Judah and Israel. And the Lord said to me, Next, take for yourself the implements of a foolish shepherd. For indeed, I will raise up a shepherd in the land who will not care for those who are cut off, nor seek the young, nor heal those that are broken, nor feed those that stand still, but he will eat the flesh of the fat and tear their hooves in pieces. Woe to the worthless shepherd who leaves the flock. A sword shall be against his arm and against his right eye. His arm shall completely wither and his right eye shall be totally blinded. Fierce words yet from the Lord, right? We move right along now to Revelation chapter 18. Revelation chapter 18. John has been put in exile out on the island of Patmos. They thought, there, now, he can't operate in anything anymore. We'll just isolate him on an island. <laughs> Look what happened. The Lord gives him the entire book of Revelation. So let's take on chapter 18. After these things, John says, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was illuminated with his glory. And he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive of her plagues. For her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her just as she rendered to you and repay her double according to her works. 
in the cup which she has mixed. Mix double for her. In the measure that she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, in the same measure, give her torment and sorrow. <clears throat> for she says in her heart, I sit as a queen and am no widow and will not see sorrow. Therefore, her plagues will come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she will be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. The kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived luxuriously with her will weep and lament for her, when they see the smoke of her burning, standing at a distance for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. You betcha. Judgment can come in a minute, can it? And the merchants of the earth will weep and mourn over her, for no one buys their merchandise anymore. Merchandise of gold and silver, precious stones and pearls, fine linen and purple, silk and scarlet, every kind of citron wood, every kind of object of ivory, every kind of object of most precious wood, bronze, iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and incense, fragrant oil, and frankincense, wine, and oil, fine flour, and wheat, cattle, and sheep, horses, and chariots, and bodies, and souls of men. The fruit that your soul longed for has gone from you, and all the things which are rich and splendid have gone from you, and you shall find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, who became rich by her, will stand at a distance for fear of her torment weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen, purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour such great riches came to nothing. Every shipmaster, all who trade by ship, sailors, and as many as trade on the sea, stood at a distance and cried out when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What is like this great city? They threw dust on their heads, and they cried out, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city in which all who had ships on the sea became rich by her wealth. For in one hour she is made desolate. Rejoice! over her, O heaven, and you holy apostles and prophets, for God has avenged you on her. And then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence the great city Babylon shall be thrown down and shall not be found any more. The sound of harpists, musicians, 
flutists, and trumpeters shall not be heard in you any more. No craftsman of any craft shall be found in you any more. And the sound of a millstone shall not be heard in you any more. The light of a lamp shall not shine in you any more. And the voice of bridegroom and bride shall not be heard in you any more. For your merchants were the great men of the earth. For by your sorcery, all the nations were deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and saints and of all who were slain on the earth. Whoa. <clears throat> and that is it for today. Very, very Fearsome judgment. Wow. It would be good if you read all that again for yourself. Out loud. Out loud. So that your ears hear your voice quoting the word of God. We move right along now to Psalm 146. 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul, while I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Do not put your trust in princes, nor in a son of man in whom there is no help. His spirit departs. He returns to his earth. In that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he who has the God of Jacob, Yachab, for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps truth forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord gives freedom to the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. Oh, don't you love that? The Lord raises those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. He relieves the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> and please, don't forget to go and see Kathy's wonderful graphics of all this. She has just found some beautiful ones. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you, Melissa for putting them out there and putting them on YouTube and other places. <clears throat> Matter of fact, this reading <clears throat> every day, Melissa puts on YouTube. So if you have some friends who don't uh, have, don't they just don't do Facebook, they could go to YouTube. And uh, now is the time here at the, the last of the month of December on the 27th, uh, let's speak to our friends and all and suggest why don't you join us and 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 in this coming year how about reading the bible the whole thing have you ever read the whole bible and see if you can have a little conversation with some people that they might know the lord come to him and be familiar with his word and his promises his healing his deliverance all the wonderful things that our Lord has. Praise the Lord. We wrap up today with Proverbs chapter 30, verse 33. Proverbs 30, verse 33. <clears throat> For as the churning of milk produces butter, and wringing the nose produces blood, so the forcing of wrath 
produces strife. Oh, have you ever run into somebody that they just, I mean, they are intent on stirring up strife. They just are working at pushing everybody's button to be upset. Those are the ones that you need to invite to come hear the word. <laughs> so they can be astounded that their problems are addressed in the word of God. Let's read that quickly again. For as the churning of milk produces butter and wringing the nose produces blood, so the forcing of wrath produces strife. Strife. We don't want strife. We want peace, don't we? Peace. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And there's Melissa putting on the wonderful graphics and this reading. Glory to God. Glory to God. We, we've been called to do these little areas of ministry. Isn't it wonderful? It, we, it doesn't take very long. But it's the faithfulness of the commitment that's important. You know, if I just showed up two days a week, nobody's going to really come. But I need it. <clears throat> I need it. When I read the word, I feel better, I do better, I'm happier. The word refreshes, it restores, it sinks in. And the word of God will walk along with you everywhere you go. It will protect, it will enlighten, it will bring joy. I mean, there's just not enough we can say about it. It's wonderful in every way, even all of the wrathful hard parts to read. They are good warnings to us, good warnings to nations and kings and rulers that the Lord knows it all. And there is one big judgment day coming in which all mankind who's ever been born will be judged. And we want to be found faithful, don't we? Faithful. <clears throat> faithful believers, <clears throat> faithful little evangelists that share the word. So let's come before our wonderful Father God in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, his only begotten Son, most gracious Father, we know that you have not moved, you've not changed your mind. Your word is a finished, settled word for everyone. And you are sitting on your throne. You would have no intentions of moving. All power is there with you. Angels have gathered. They are praising you. They are worshiping. There is a lot of joy and noise in the throne room. Oh, Father God, we turn our attention and our hearts of love to you. We come to you, Lord, and we pray for the peace of Jerusalem. You have asked us to pray for her peace, and it is so threatened at the moment. Father God, we'd ask that you would supernaturally put your right hand of power and blessing upon your people, upon the leader you have in office, Bibi Netanyahu, and all of the other leadership in Israel and the Knesset and the Israeli Defense Forces. And I have a special little son from Charleston here in those forces. And so I'd ask, Lord, you would bless Danny and keep him safe, Lord. Bless them all. <clears throat> Give them the battle plans that are yours. That they might defend the IDF, Israeli Defense Force. They only defend themselves, not aggressive to other people. 
but we bless you for them, Lord, for you have anointed them for this day. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Give Bibi Netanyahu wisdom, Lord. Give all of them wisdom for the war, for the battles, for the safety. <clears throat> Cause them to find hidden things that were put there for danger to the people. And Lord, we'd ask that you would bring healing to all of those hearts that have been broken, all the, the ones that have seen terrible, terrible scenes of tortured people, heads cut off, and young women who have been raped and abused very badly. Oh, Father God, please, please, touch them today. Bring healing. Bring healing, Lord. We hold up America, Lord, and we hold up other countries in the world. And we'd ask, Lord, that you would wake up America with a great revival. Wake her up to bring her back to you and bring the newer generations who have not even been told about you. They are, they are untrained. They are unchurched. Please, Lord, cause us to be active evangelists sharing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, particularly with those who don't know, praying with those who are discouraged. Help us, Lord Jesus, to be a blessing everywhere we go. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, I'd ask you would hear all the prayers of your sons and daughters who are here <clears throat> and who are coming later in the day, in the middle of the night, whenever, that you would hear and that you would encourage their hearts and bring answers to the problems. And all of God's people cried a hearty, Amen. Went about your day rejoicing in the Lord. Love you all so much. Bye-bye.